week at the Panhandle Research and Extension Center in Scotts Bluff, we talked with Carla Jenkins about why farmers and ranchers may be forced to feed cattle in confinement because of back-to-back -back dry years. Of course, last year we had a horrendous drought with extreme temperatures, and so that put us in a major soil water deficit going into this year. This year, on average, across the state, we're still only at 60, 70, 80 percent of the moisture rainfall that we would normally have um, by this time of year. So that combined with the deficit of last year has reduced grass growth tremendously. So we're short on grass. Um, even if we had had the rainfall that we should have had, we still would have needed to delay turnout and reduce stocking rates to get that grass some recovery time. And so as a result, we're having to delay some pastures to where they have no turnout at all. Um, stocking rates have had to be reduced 30 to 50 percent. So what cows weren't sold um, due to drought had to go somewhere. And so that's why a lot of cows ended up in confinement feeding situations, even through lactation with the, with the baby. Even with feed prices, what are the other challenges that go with that? Feed prices are high, but grass is not available. I mean, if the if the grass does not grow, there you just you can't make it. And so um, we have pasture so shortages. The drought last year was so widespread across the Midwest that it makes it difficult to move cows to places where there is grass. Most of the area in the United States that is what we would typically consider our cow calf country was hit by this drought. So where in some years when we would have a drought in, say, Nebraska, we might be able to move cows to graze in South Dakota. And, and this year, that's been very challenging because most of that area was hit as well. What are you using in this diet? How does the diet change once you move them into the, uh, the feedlot? What are some things that come into play? We have been able to use crop residues such as corn stalks, corn stover, or wheat straw mixed with byproducts such as um, distiller's grains and beet pulp out here in the West. We were able to mix some beet pulp in the diet, cheapen the diet up, but, but meet the energy needs. Currently, these cows on this particular study are on, uh, on a dry matter basis on 40% distillers, 40% silage, and 20% wheat straw. What's the uh, supplementation, if there's any at all? Well, um, they get trace minerals and some calcium supplement to go with that. The phosphorus comes in the distillers. With your study, are they in the dry lot for the entirety of the summer, do you expect? In the study, in this particular study, these cows spend their entire production cycle 12 months out of the year in confinement so that we can see how that plays out for producers so we can help them decide which segments they might want to have their cows in confinement if that's what it comes to. What are the expectations on performance in these situations? So far, these cows have done extremely well. Um, the cows are in five and six condition score, which is moderate to very good. What we've found is we can feed these residues, we can feed these byproducts. As long as we're meeting the energy requirements of those cows, they do just fine. So we can limit the amount of dry matter that they're fed. So that reduces the cost of the ration, but we're not limiting the energy. And so if we balance that diet, even if it has byproducts and residues in it, as long as the energy is met, those cows maintain their weight very well. Have you been able to use any silage out here? Was there any available? The eastern part of the state's maybe a little different story, but what about here? We do put up some silage out here in the western Nebraska, and it is a, 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 a comparable energy source. I mean, it's, it's good. It's, um, it works well for the cows, and from a cost of an energy basis, cost on an energy basis, um, then it's a um, pretty good source. So we have included some silage in these diets to maybe help the calf grow a little better than just a straight uh, residue and distiller's diet since these calves are going to spend a good chunk of their lives uh, in confinement on the same diet that the cow is on. Carla's recent webinar on using crop residues to limit feed cows in confinement can be found on the Beef website. We'll also link to it on the Market Journal homepage if you're interested in finding more information.